So it's, it's really the Seattle area if you want to treat it as like the epicenter. And then as you slowly move outward, uh, you're going to see more and more uh, conservatives and conservative religious people. But I think we're, we're weird. We're not exactly Alabama. We're, right, right. I think that our conservatives here are less social conservatives who uh, scream about uh, religion. And they're more of the uh, anti-government sort of... Uh, you know. Libertarian, libertarian is sort of leaming well ones. Yeah. There is, there is a I just have my eye on the, on the national number. I'm just keeping my eye on the non-affiliated <laughs> national number. Oh, okay, I, I guess getting back to your main question, though. It well, went from 12, I think, percent to around 16% in the last couple of years, and I'm hoping to see that in 20 in the next five years, the, 20%. The error, the error bars on that are going to be huge. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't speak out, so yeah. you know, who knows what that number actually is. It's hard All right, to guys, say. well, thanks for taking my question. Thank hey, you very thank much. you. Uh, if I may return to something, because uh, this is an important thing for me, is that I think it's really transitions, uh, sort of societal transitions, because we're, there's sort of a renaissance of atheism going on right now. But there was a renaissance of non-theism in the 20th century as well. And it was uh, sort of epitomized in the, saying, uh, in the saying that God died in the trenches of World War I. And it took a new revival movement to bring Christianity as we're, where we see it today. Oh, yeah. So I think every time we sort of get an increase in our understanding of ourselves, and I, I think uh, we understood a little bit more about ourselves after a couple world wars, I don't know about you, uh, th there is sort of a transition away from, from theism. Yeah, I, I know there have been different resurgences of, of religious fundamentalism. One of them was, you know, prohibition. That The Temperance Union was very overtly a Christian organization talking about the sin of alcohol use. And the same thing too, the 70s, you get things like the moral majority. So these things do come in waves the same way atheism comes in waves. I mean, um, that's, that's kind of that same thing, was that new atheism isn't really new. Yeah. Yes, I mean, there's nothing that Richard Dawkins and uh, Daniel Dennett and, and Sam Harris are saying that Robert Ingersoll didn't say 100 years ago. So um, <laughs> even in tone, it's, it's very, very similar. So, but I, I, think, I think the caller's right in the fact that uh, Religion goes to die in places where there's open exchanges of information, where um, a lot of times the, the power of religious organizations is pretty much uh, guaranteed by their ability to control the flow of information. And I know I'm going to talk about that later, but Christians, it's very easy for them to only expose themselves to Christian opinion, uh, only Christian music, only Christian uh, talk radio, only uh, Christian books. So there, there is sort of a social thing there is that when you've got this free exchange of information, and people are beginning to, to, to see uh, things in a different way and they transition away from religion, the people who are left over tend to be uh, of a more fundamentalist bent. Uh, is, is that's, that's actually a well-documented, you lose the outsiders is what they say. Well, I think also any, any sort of resurgence of any, any sort of scientific advance a lot of the time, uh, those are the people who get the most vocal, like they feel like they have to protect society like from moral collapse. And they almost use those exact terms when they talk about that. Um, like they really think, and that, that, I think it's sort of interesting is whenever you man a booth for Seattle Atheists or any organization, a lot of times people will approach you as if they've already been attacked. It's simply uh, asserting your existence is, is the first punch, and they just come up and start yelling at you a lot of the time. And I don't think they understand that they're starting that fight that I haven't done anything to them other than be open about what I am, no more than them saying that they're Christian is an attack on me. It's not. Yeah, no, I, that's exactly how it is. You're just sitting there, and it's a little different, I, I guess, in the parades a bit, but I mean, when I sit at Booth, uh, my whole point is just to be open. Uh, I'm not looking to put forth anything. Just wait for people to come and ask us questions. And they see something on TV they don't like, and they automatically assume that, that that's my voice so they come to me and, and just it it's the it's the rhetorical equivalent of a guy walking up to you and decking you yeah I, I think also it's it's worth mentioning you mentioned the disparity of the numbers uh, with people who are willing to call themselves atheists the reason those numbers are so wide is that there really is this, this stigma against the word that even when I uh, was going through the process and sometimes a very painful process of admitting that I'm an atheist um, I tripped along the word agnostic, non-practicing Catholic. I know I've talked about that before. But that <laughs> stigma really is there. And a lot of people who will say when asked, do you believe in a God? And they'll say no. They won't call themselves an atheist. It's like when President Obama mentioned non-believers during uh, his inaugural address. Even he doesn't want to go there. There clearly is this sort of word. And that's where you get groups that want to call themselves brights and other things. Um, I really hate the term bright. I know that you do as I'm well. I'm not particularly fond. I mean, I understand why they came up with it, but I'm not, I'm not fond of it. It, it seems 
a uh, little Heidi to me. Well, I, I think my beef with it is that it's both it's arrogant and mincing, <laughs> and I think that that's a weird combination of things. I think that um, it, mincing. It, it's mincing, it's dainty. Okay. And I, I, th I think it's basically a euphemism. They don't like the A word, so they run away from it. And I mean, this is, this is pretty standard. Even people like Robert Ingersoll and, um, and uh, Clarence Darrow, who are both very clearly atheists. I mean, you can't get much more atheist than Clarence Darrow saying, I don't believe in God because I don't believe in Mother Goose. <laughs> this isn't somebody who's afraid of stating his belief. He still called himself an agnostic. And this is not new atheism, people. This, is, this has been around a while. This is ye old atheism. <laughs> so... Um, uh, let's take another quick news story real quick. Um, oh boy. Speaking of uh, growing attitudes, um, I, think, I think something I've really noticed is that a lot of people have this certain fallacy where we all like to believe that we are the silent majority, that we all represent much larger groups than you. And I think that a lot of uh, liberal and moderate uh, Christians do this as well. They like to believe that the fundamentalists are just this tiny little pocket of society that are just very, very loud. And that, no, actually, everyone is just like me. Well, atheists, we can't pretend that. Uh, we can't pretend that we're the majority. But uh, Pew Research actually just did their, their latest poll about what people feel about war, terrorism, global trends. And, well, it appears that 41% uh, of Americans believe that Jesus either definitely or probably will come back in the next 50 years, which is slightly less than the number of people who think that uh, we're going to be hit by an asteroid. So what was that number? 41%? 41% of okay. Americans, and that's actually 54% of Protestants, 58% of white evangelicals, and 32% of Catholics. So this is not a small group. This is actually a pretty large group of people. It's not just uh, Fred Phelps and his family of like 50 people. This is a lot of people who um, believe This free. is kind of news to me, so it's, it's, uh, it's hitting a little hard, actually. Yeah, it's, I mean, that's the thing, is these people really do represent a lot of people. We actually have a call on the line. Stephanie from Redmond, are you on? Yes, I what? just want to tell you, uh, this is the first time I'm home, and I said, oh, I'm going to see what's going on on seven, Channel 77. <laughs> and I, I do like Roger, you know, the, the other person. And, uh, and then you follow. And I said, this is kind of interesting. So I do like both of you, and I do agree and. There are some fanatic religions that are totally wacko, nuts. And I do believe that the problems in the world are all these religions. My religion is better than yours. Oh, no, mine is better than yours. And, uh, and especially those crazy people on television. Uh, I don't want to mention well. names. And that's part of the reason why we're here. Yeah, that and, our, our perspective just isn't heard in the, the media. The, let me tell you, I am Catholic, born Catholic, hot. I'm a very open-minded person. Thank and you. And I do believe, I don't believe God is coming and going to destroy everything. No, I don't believe that. I think we as a humans, we're going to destroy ourselves. Yeah, we're doing a pretty good job of it we're so doing, far. I agree well, with you, we're doing a really good job. So we can go blaming God. Now, I believe we all are energy. And, uh, and so you, uh, you have to be open to science and religion. Now, I believe quite a bit in the universe. Well, I, I, I guess I would, I would disagree on that. Of being, I, I'm open to just about anything, but my acceptance of any claim is, is predicated on its ability to meet a burden of proof. And frankly, religious claims don't typically meet that burden of proof. Well, you know, like I said, I'm Catholic, but um, I refuse to read the Bible. And one of the reasons I tell my friend, no, I don't read the Bible because there's nothing but violence in there. Yeah. Who wrote the book, I mean, the Bible? I Man. Yeah, there's a certain <laughs> irony in the fact that the people who are really religious are the ones who object to violence and sex in, on TV when their book is, is really nothing but violence and sex. I know a lot of write, yeah. writers use it for a source. Yeah, so. It, it, and so, so I refuse to read the Bible. Now, I brought up my children in their nice, wonderful, uh, civil uh, citizens, and... I, I was blessed with that, and maybe, maybe because my mother and my father brought me up this way. Be open mind, and I do read quite a bit about all the religions. What are the major four religions? I read about um, how do you pronounce at um, at, 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 at how you pronounce it? 